Hello everyone. This is the sixth part of the story I'm Voldemort. Chapter 43. Eldritch Weaponry. Tom and Druella took the train out of Hogwarts as usual, but this time they were joined by Briar, who is Druella's brother, and Charles Potter. Briar has become the sort of leader to the council since Tom took over. Because of his sister's friendship with their lord, Briar has far more political clout than before. He took over fairly easily with some small assistance here and there from his sister, Druella. This didn't go unnoticed by Tom and he had no objection over the change. If Briar is found to be incompetent, then Tom could just simply replace him. As for Charles Potter, he became quick friends with Tom and Druella, which upset some of the more hardcore snake haters. Although most of the Gryffindor house is on fairly good terms with Tom and Druella, so most of the house didn't mind Potter's out-of-house friendships. Hey, what are you guys doing during the break? Charles asked as they take off down the tracks. Everyone went into a grand discussion about what their family was planning for the holidays. Tom lied and said he was going to celebrate with the children in the orphanage. He can't tell anyone of his sorcery training, at least not yet. He would trust Druella with it, but he's just grown used to keeping a few secrets from his friend. He'll tell her sooner or later, and maybe even teach her a few things once he becomes a master. After a long ride back to King's Cross Station, Tom said goodbye to his friends and found an abandoned area to portal into Camartage. He knows where all of the sanctums are now, but why bother when he can just open a portal? When he arrived his teacher, Master Keto attacked him the second he saw him. They exchange blows as Tom is pushed back and dodged his teacher onslaught of attacks. Tom didn't slack on his martial arts practice during his few months at Hogwarts. He followed Keto's instructions and even went beyond the training schedule he was given. That training showed itself here and now, as he is lasting far more time against Master Keto. He's not winning by a long shot, but he's definitely starting to keep up with his teacher's movements. The impromptu spar lasted a good eight minutes before Tom was swiftly knocked on his back. The second Tom hit the ground, he was breathing heavy and didn't get back up. He knew that he was beaten again by his teacher, but he also knew that he lasted far longer than usual. He may have been knocked on his ass, but pride swelled in his chest. He's improving with every bit of hard work he puts into his training. Hmm, you haven't been slacking in your training, I see. Keto says as he offers his hand to help Tom up. Yeah. I didn't want to go through whatever crazy training you would put me through if I happened to slack off. Tom said as he accepts his teacher's hand and is pulled up to his feet. Good, I have nothing left to teach you, Tom. Keto says as he nods proudly at his student. This doesn't mean that you can't improve anymore, as compared to me you are quite weak. The only thing you need to do to improve now is gain experience, keep training, and most importantly grow. Tom knew that was one of the factors holding him back in his spars. He's still fairly young and his younger body will continue to hold him back. The fact that Tom could last so long against Keto already shows how skilled he has become in martial arts. Thanks for everything, Master Keto. Tom says as he bows to Keto. You're very welcome. Keto says with a proud smile on his face. Now, you must go and speak with the Ancient One. She will explain the next portion of your training. Keto says and walks away feeling proud of his youngest student. Tom went straight to the Ancient One and found her alone eating some junk food. One thing about the Ancient One that Tom has learned is her love of junk food. She's the opposite of Dumbledore as she likes salty snacks instead of sweets. She may hide it well, but as her disciple, Tom has a sort of unfettered access to her at all times. These times include what she would call her me time which is when she turns off the leader part and busy part of her brain and acts far more normal. When Tom arrived, he saw his master curled up on the couch eating salty pretzels and reading a muggle mystery novel. This is a part of the great and bald ancient one that only her closest disciples get to see. Hello, teacher. Tom says as he enters the room. Oh, you're back. 
she says as she closes her book and stands to greet Tom. Yeah, I just finished a spar against Master Keto, and he said that I passed. He also said that you would explain the next portion of my training to me. Tom says with a bit of pride in his voice. Oh, so you didn't slack off as he feared. It's good that you didn't, as I saw the training schedule for you if that were to happen. Let's just say that Keto can be very cruel when he wants to be. She says with a wry smile. Hee <laughs> hee, I'm not very surprised. Keto training is already backbreaking. Imagining his punishment training is a dreadful thought. Tom says as a shiver runs down his spine at the mere thought of it. So, what's the next part of my training? Ah, uh, yes. The next part of your training will be to learn this. The Ancient One said as she summons Eldritch Whips. She molds the golden Eldritch energy into whips and spins then around a few times. After showing them off a bit, she then flings them forward and tied up Tom fairly easily. He just looks at his teacher with the did you have to do that, look. Eldritch Whips are defensive weapons, but once you've mastered them, you can do things like this. She ignores Tom's look and shows him something else. The golden whips disappear releasing Tom, and the Ancient One calls forth the Eldritch energy again. This time she summons a golden spear made of the same energy as the whips. Eldritch weaponry can be anything that you set your mind to. A spear as I have now she says, and then the spear changes or a sword as you're quite fond of them. She says and a golden sword appears in her hand. Wow, that's pretty cool. Can you make whatever weapons you summon move without holding them? Tom asks as he imagines turning this ability into something like heat-seeking projectiles. Hmm, I've never tried but that could be possible. She says as she tries to levitate the sword. The problem would be in the summoning of the eldritch energy. We summon the energy and mold it with a part of our body, like the hands. When we theoretically let go of an eldritch construct, it tends to disappear. Although, that doesn't mean that it's not possible. You would just have to practice summoning and keeping that construct together at further ranges. This isn't something you have to worry about now though. You have to learn to walk before trying to run. Master the art before trying to expand upon it further. Yes, teacher. Now, how should I go about constructing these whips? Chapter 44, Mark Tom spent the short Christmas break practicing with the Eldritch Whips almost constantly. He got to the point where he could summon a half a meter long golden whip. He wasn't near being satisfied with his progress, but the Ancient One says he is progressing quickly. She rarely gives encouraging words like this, so Tom knew that he was doing well. Other than the whips, Tom has been scouring the library for anything that could connect him and his followers. Canon Voldemort had the dark mark, and Tom wants something like that. Although he doesn't want his mark to be as visible as the canon one. He wants something that is a bit more conspicuous while also serving some sort of a purpose. After tearing through the Camartage library, Tom found a book on a curse that seemed perfect for his purposes. The curse is called the Liar's Mark. It's a curse that was placed on criminals in ancient times. The mark would be placed on someone by someone else, and the one that placed it would be able to tell if whoever has the mark is lying. It was mainly used to root out thieves and settle disputes. Tom thought that he could combine that curse and his mark to create a way to tell when his followers are lying. The next step would be to somehow let Tom contact his followers through the mark as Canon Voldemort did but better. Other than that, Tom wants to somehow be able to hide the mark from prying eyes. Tom doesn't need people connecting dots and wondering why all of his followers have the same tattoo. The only thing at Camartage that was able to help Tom with his mark was the book on the liar's mark. Nothing else that Tom found had anything that could help him with his other requirements. Though the library of Camartage is vast and Tom hasn't seen everything yet. Before returning to Hogwarts, Tom looked into some companies that he could invest in. He has been promising to send a list to Aluk for a long time now. The problem was that his busy schedule just kept getting in the way. Also, Tom is extremely rich, so he isn't too worried about future money problems. 
He took a few days to look into businesses, as he can't just write down future companies and send them to a luck. What if they don't exist yet, or will never exist at all in this universe? He sent him a list of MCU companies along with some normal companies that he knew would do well from his time as Gregory. Once the list was compiled, Tom old it straight to Aluk. At first, Aluk was very skeptical about following Tom's judgment on these sorts of things. As a goblin, he's been trained from a young age to work in his field. In the mind of Aluk, Tom is brilliant but very young and inexperienced. Though that doesn't mean that Aluk didn't follow the investments Tom sent him. Aluk has been watching a few of the companies on Tom's list and liked them very much. The rest he wasn't so sure about, but he invested in them anyway. If they do well, then he underestimated the boy, but if they do bad, then Tom will learn a lesson about investing without experience and knowledge. Once Christmas break ended, Tom returned to Hogwarts once again. The back and forth between two separate schools has started to become tiresome for him. He may breeze through the classes at Hogwarts, but that doesn't make them any less tedious. Not that he hates it. No, Tom loves learning magic and bettering himself. He feels like he's playing a game, and with every day his character is getting stronger. The feeling of advancing forward and seeing that progress firsthand is great. Whether it be in magic, sorcery, or martial arts Tom loves the feeling of moving to the next level so to say. Although, he definitely needs a break sometime soon. A week of just doing nothing would be a euphoric time for someone that has been busy for so long. Maybe I'll take a week off at the start of summer. I could go to one of my many properties and spend the week being waited on by house elves and napping. Tom thought and immediately set that as his plan. When Tom returned to Hogwarts, the majority of his free time was spent piecing together his mark. He looked for any books in the ROR that could help him with his newest goal. Tom ended up finding a book on invisible ink. The ink would hide itself until magic is pumped into it in a certain code. Once the code was entered, the ink would show itself until another code is used to hide it. The code itself could be anything and is similar to Morse code, as it's made up of long and short spurts of magic. Tom didn't find a way to communicate through the marks in the ROR. He tried so many commands on the room, and even tried looking through the library manually. Nothing appeared that Tom felt would help with his mark. Just when he thought his luck had run out, Mimsy asked if he wanted her to check the books from his properties. Tom almost forgot he had those books. He's been so busy that he doesn't even have time to stay at any one of his properties. He has had the elves cleaning them up though. They were a mess from being neglected for so many years. With Mimsy's idea to look into the books in his properties, Tom opened a portal to one of the manors that Slytherin used to own. This is the place that Tom had the elves house all of the books. It had the biggest library out of all the properties Tom owns. Even bigger than the castles under his name. Tom would then come to this manor at night looking for a book that could help him with the last piece of the puzzle. A couple of months before the end of the year, Tom finally found a book on runes that can be used for communication. They weren't fully tested and the creator died before fully developing them, but he saw this as the last piece of his puzzle. Tom has the way to keep the mark hidden, the lie detector, and a way to contact his followers. This is the perfect mark and now he just has to develop it, which will most definitely take some time. He has to combine all of these separate things into one functioning piece of magic. Not to mention the communication feature that still needs to be tested before application. Other than working on his personal studies, Tom has been training and teaching the Slytherin students every morning as usual. The majority of them have a good grip of acclimacy and would be up to his standards by next year. The new rules in Slytherin have been enforced very harshly in the beginning. Tom needed to make an example out of anyone that would go against his rules. The number of people that did so was very small though. Some students still thought they could act as they usually do, as long as no one from Slytherin was there to see. These people were those that would bully Muggleborn students. Especially the younger ones as they are the easiest targets. 
The punishments weren't too crazy, as those being punished are children, but Tom made sure to make them regret not following the rules. The House Cup went to the Ravenclaws this year, as Tom ordered his followers to keep their points low. They have been winning every year since Tom joined Slytherin, and he doesn't want to create bad blood between the houses over something that truly doesn't matter. When Tom and his group left the school, Tom couldn't help but be excited over his small vacation. He plans to do nothing for a whole week. Just the idea of that one week off relaxes his tired mind. Chapter 45 Vacation When his third year of Hogwarts ended, Tom rode the train with Druella and Briar. Charles is in another compartment with his friends from Gryffindor, so it's just the three of them. They've been on the train for a while and should be arriving at King's Cross soon. Throughout the whole ride, Briar has been acting a bit twitchy, as if he has something to say but is unsure of how and when to say it. This didn't go unnoticed by Tom, while Druella seemed to be getting annoyed with her brother's behavior. Speak up already. Watching you squirm around is giving me anxiety. Druella exclaims as she glares at her brother. Yes, I agree. What's got you so jumpy? Tom says as he brings all of his attention to Briar. Well, you see. Some of the Slytherin parents are asking questions about the changes at Hogwarts, including our own, Druella. He says and an annoyed pout graces her lips. Tell them to mind their own business. She says as he pout deepens. Tom could easily tell that her relationship with her parents has strained. This is no doubt the outcome of her choice to befriend him, so he feels a bit bad about it. If she didn't befriend him, she would most likely have a good relationship with her parents. Stop right there. Druella calls as she notices Tom's sudden change in emotions. If you're thinking that it's your fault my parents are assholes, then you're wrong so stop with the self-deprecation. They were always the way they are now, but now they don't see me as the perfect pure-blood princess. If they knew that you were the heir to Slytherin, then they would be over the moon with my choice in friends. Like I said many times before, being friends with you is probably the best thing that has ever happened to me. Don't worry about the small stuff. It's not like my parents beat me or starve me. They just tend to ignore me, which truthfully isn't so bad. She says as she tries to comfort her friend. Yes, this moment between you guys is great and all, but our parents aren't the only problem. Briar interrupts with a worried look. I agree that it's a problem that the parents are becoming suspicious, but this is a problem that I will put to the back of my list for now. I don't trust the parents to reveal myself to them. At the moment I'm too young for them to respect me and too weak to fight grown wizards. Once I've become powerful enough, I'll recruit the parents as I did their children. Tom says as he looks out the window. I agree, but what if they question their children with legitimacy or veritaserum? Druella adds. Everyone has been progressing well in a clemency. Some are falling behind the rest, but they're all up to a pretty good standard. If a parent were to break into their child's mind, then I'll deal with the outcome as it happens. As for the truth serum, that is very unlikely to happen so I'm not going to worry about it. Tom says as he shrugs his shoulder. So, your strategy is to do nothing? Briar asks questioningly. Yeah, sometimes the best thing to do is nothing at all. Tom replies and Briar looked unsure about everything. Don't worry so much, Briar. I'll take care of anything that happens. Tom says with a confident smile. All right. Briar says, but he still feels unsure. Seeing that nothing he says is really helping, Tom just spends the rest of the train ride reading one of the Ancient One's mystery novels. After spending so much time with her, Tom has grown a small liking to these types of books. He plans to spend the week before heading to Camartage with this book as well. When they arrived at the station and said goodbye, Tom found a secluded area and opened a portal to one of his homes in the United States. The rest of the world is embroiled in war, while America is sitting on the sidelines still. They won't enter into World War II until Pearl Harbor is bombed by Japan. This won't happen until December 7th, 
1941, which will take place before the Christmas break in Tom's fourth year at Hogwarts. Even then the United States itself won't be invaded, so Tom can still spend his vacation time there without worry. Speaking of the war, Tom is still hoping to participate in it. He wants to do a few things during this war. One of them is killing Grindelwald and taking the Elder Wand, of course. The second is meeting and befriending Captain America. Before that though, he wishes to steal the formula that made the short skinny boy into the powerhouse that is Captain America. Lastly, Tom wants to steal the Tesseract and take the Space Stone from within. At first, Tom wanted to follow Cannon and take the stones at the perfect moment. That idea was thrown to the wayside when he thought of that plan failing. His mere presence will change the future, and letting such a powerful item go could come back to bite him in the future. The best outcome would be to get as many stones as he can before Thanos. I don't understand why Thanos didn't just use the stones to help people in a different way than just proofing half of them away. He could have grown every inhabitable planet until there was enough land for trillions and trillions of people. He could have made plants grow in abundance for harvests. He could have terraformed every dead planet into a habitable wonderland. Yet he uses his powers to simply cut the universe's population in half. Truly a waste of such overpowered abilities. Tom thought as he lounged on the couch reading and eating potato chips. He arrived at his vacation home in New York a few days ago. The time here has been spent on absolutely nothing at all. He hasn't exercised, read anything, and most of his time is spent on this very couch. It's been a beautiful holiday from the busy life he's been leading so far. While stuffing his face with chips, Tom realizes that he's turning into his master, the Ancient One. She does the exact same thing that he's doing right now. I guess when you spend enough time with someone, their habits will rub off onto you. Tom thought with a shrug as he continued eating his potato chips. Sadly, good things must come to an end. After a week of doing nothing while being waited on by house elves, Tom had to return to Kamartage to continue his training. The elves were sad to see him go, as this last week has been their moment to shine. They enjoyed waiting on their master more than anything. With sad elves saying their goodbyes, Tom opened a portal to Kamartage and walked through. I'll have to set up another vacation, but withdrew this time. Maybe sometime after the war is over. Chapter 46. Urgent Letter. When Tom arrived at Kamartaj, he was met with his master the Ancient One. He portaled straight into her private quarters. She was floating in the middle of the room while using the Time Stone to look into the future. This tends to happen every few days as the Ancient One likes to be up to date on the possible futures. Seeing that she is busy, Tom browsed her collection of mystery novels. He already finished the one he has, so he needed another one. After finding an interesting book, Tom sat on the couch and started reading. I see you're back from the vacation. The Ancient One says as she awakens from her trance. Yeah, it was the best. Doing nothing is the best thing to do. Tom replies as he closes his book. He managed to get through two chapters while waiting for his teacher to be finished. Once the Ancient One heard his reply, she couldn't help but agree with his statement. Have you improved in the use of Eldritch Whips? She asks as she takes a seat across Tom. Yeah, I've pretty much mastered them. Tom replies with a proud smile. Good, show me how much you've improved. She says, sitting back to examine Tom's progress. Tom then places his hands together and summons the Eldritch Energy. Once the energy is flowing, Tom pulls his hands apart and two whips extend from his hands. One on the left and another on the right. He then starts extending the whips and whipping them around to show his mastery over them. Very good, you can stop now. The Ancient One says and Tom stops drawing on the Eldritch Energy. The whips disappear and he takes a seat across his teacher once again. Now we can move on to different constructs. As the Ancient One says this, she constructs a broadsword out of Eldritch Energy. She then waves it around a bit for Tom to get a good look at it. 
This will be the first construct you will focus on. You chose the sword as your weapon of choice, so it will be the first construct you work on. She says and the sword disappears from her grip. Once you've mastered this, you will become a disciple, which is only one step below being a master of the mystic arts. Hearing how close he is to becoming a master, Tom started to grow excited. Once he becomes a master, Tom will be able to get his own relic like Dr. Strange's cape. He knew his master wouldn't give him any pointers, so he said goodbye and went straight to practice. The Ancient One watched her favorite student leave with a smile on her face. He may not be the most skilled in the mystic arts she's ever seen, but he was still her favorite. Sometimes the hard-working students shine brighter than any prodigy. Not to say that Tom isn't skilled in sorcery. She would say that Tom is slightly above average, but with his hard work, he could become far stronger than her one day. Although, she doubted that she would be alive to see that day. The best possible future still involves her death. I've been alive long enough. I'm sure my predecessor will handle my job wonderfully. She thought but deep down she was afraid of the unknown that is death. Once Tom left the Ancient One, he went straight to a private training area. There he started working on constructing his weapon. He would draw the eldritch energy and try molding it into the perfect sword. The first day was spent trying and failing to do so, but he still didn't give up. Tom spent every day of the summer molding eldritch energy. He tried some basic things like molding the energy into shapes. When he mastered the easier shapes like circles and squares, Tom moved on to more difficult and elaborate shapes. Other than working on his eldritch weapon, Tom has been following his training as normal. Though his spare time has been spent on creating the mark for his followers. The mark itself is a hard thing to make. Tom has to combine three separate pieces of magic and transform them into his own creation. Not to say that Tom can't do it. He is inching closer and closer to the finish line, but it's very time-consuming. While Tom was working on the mark in the middle of summer break, an owl flew into the window and dropped a letter in front of him. The owl looked tired from a long journey and was about to fall asleep at any moment. Tom couldn't tell whose owl this was, but it's not like he memorized everyone's pets. Tom casts a few detection spells on the owl and the letter just to be safe. When he sees that there are no traps or anything of that sort, Tom opens the letter and starts reading. With every word he reads, Tom's blood starts to boil. You must hurry. My parents plan to use Veritasarum on Druella. They know the risks of using such a potion on someone so young, yet they don't listen to me. They have been hounding us to tell them what's going on at Hogwarts, and we've been playing it off as if nothing has happened. Although, that didn't seem to work. They ordered the potion from a master potion maker, and it will arrive within the week. Until then, Druella has been put on house arrest. She isn't allowed to leave the house and the wards are keeping her from escaping. The potion is set to arrive on July 29th. Hopefully, this gets to you in time. It seems I was wrong about the odds of a parent using Veritasarum on their child. Tom thought as he checked the date. It's the 26th so Tom has a bit of time before the potion arrives. He already knows where Druella lives so he can go there any time with a portal. The question is how strong are her parents and is there anyone else on the grounds? Seeing as Druella's parents are pure-blood nobles, they have most likely been through the best schooling and training that money can buy. This means that Tom may not be strong enough to beat them head-on. He'll have to take them by surprise and either capture them or kill them. Based on the way Druella speaks of them, she wouldn't be too torn up about their deaths. Although she wouldn't be overly sad, Tom still would rather not kill his best friend's parents. As for whether anyone else is there besides the Rosier family, Tom doesn't know and won't know until he checks for himself. He could open a portal and send in an elf to gather information, but would that elf be found out somehow? He'll have to ask his elves if they could go unnoticed or not. I'll take them by surprise and capture them. If something goes wrong, then I'll go straight for the kill. 
Tom thought as he drops his current work on the mark and leaves to get some things together. Maybe I should ask the Ancient One for help? Nah, I can handle this on my own. But a few backup plans wouldn't be bad. Chapter 47 Preparation Seeing that Tom has time before the potion arrives at Rosier Manor, he decided to prepare fully for this encounter. Tom has never faced off against a grown wizard and doesn't know what to expect. The best course of action would be to gather information, and the best way to gather information is by sending a house elf. The problem with this plan is Tom doesn't know if an elf could be found out somehow. Can the rosier elves sense the intrusion from one of their kind or would the wards pick up on an uninvited guest? Mimsy. Tom calls and his most trusted elf appears with a pop. Master called for Mimsy? She says with an eager expression. Yes, I need to know a few things about house elves, Tom says. Mimsy will tell Master all he wants to know. She says with a happy smile. Thank you. First, if I were to send an elf to a warded noble's house with a portal, would the wards alert the owners of your arrival? Tom asks and Mimsy thinks for a second. Hmm. Mimsy places her hand on her chin and thinks really hard. If we was poppin' in, then yes the wards will block us and tell the master of the house. I'm not sure about master's portals though. Sorry, I'm not helpin, master. She says and her ears lower with sadness. That's okay, Mimsy. Just answering truthfully will help me a lot. Tom pats her bald head. What about the house elves already in the home? Would they notice your arrival somehow? As long as we hide, the other elves won't notice us. Mimsy says proudly as she gets back her confidence. Good, I need to go and look into wards. You may return to whatever you were doing before I called. I'll call for you again soon as I may have an important mission for you and the other elves. Tom says and looked eager to fulfill her master's mission. Mimsy will be ready at all times for master's call. She says as she radiates happiness and pops away. I have the best house elf. Tom thought as he leaves the room and makes his way to the ancient one's quarters. It's late in the evening but she should still be awake. Most likely reading her mystery novels Tom thought as he knocks on the door. After a moment of waiting, a slightly annoyed looking ancient one answers their door. Sigh. Why do people have to bother me during my precious reading time? The ancient one thought as she opened the door and is met with her favorite student. What's the matter, Tom? She asks as Tom knows this is the time she spends relaxing and wouldn't interrupt if he didn't have to. May I speak with you inside for a moment? He says and she steps aside for him to enter. They move into her private quarters and sit opposite one another in the living area. What happened? She asks as she conjures some tea for herself and her student. I need some information about wizarding wards. Some of my plans are at risk and a friend is in trouble. I have some time to prepare but I need some information first. Tom says plainly. Hmm, and what would I receive in exchange? She asks as she sees this as a perfect time to get some info on her most mysterious student. The only person on this earth that the Ancient One can't see with the Time Stone is Tom. She wants to solve this puzzle but Tom is a very private person. Throughout his study and training at Camartage, Tom has revealed very little to her. This is the opportunity she's been waiting for and she definitely won't pass it up. What would you like in return? He asks, hoping it's nothing unreasonable. Tom trusts his teacher to not do anything that would cause him harm, so he doesn't mind trading for the information. I'll help you as long as you reveal a single high-level secret about yourself to me. After you've told it to me, you must swear on your magic that it is the truth. She says as she sips her tea and Tom weighs his options. Fine, but for that I also want your promise that you won't reveal it to anyone. You can't make a vow in your magic as we wizards do so I'll take a normal promise. Tom says as he trusts the Ancient One. Deal. I promise I won't reveal the secret you're about to tell me. She says with ease as she had no plans to reveal it anyway. Hmm, what should I tell you? 
Tom thinks for a minute and decides on his secret. I'm the heir to three very old and powerful noble families in the wizarding world. One of them is the most noble and ancient house of Slytherin. He revealed but didn't say anything about the other two houses. Ah, so you're related to the little snake, huh? I've met him a few times in the past. The ancient one says as she remembers her meeting with Tom's ancestor. What are the other two? I'll save those for when I need something from you again. Tom says with a smirk and his teacher pouted at him but doesn't ask further. Tom then makes a vow on his magic that what he revealed is the truth as he promised. The Ancient One feels happy to learn more about her student. She'll keep asking for secrets whenever he needs something like this. Sooner or later he'll run out of secrets, and she'll hopefully know why she can't see him. All right, what do you need to know about wizarding wards? She asks and Tom starts throwing out questions. First, he asked her the same question he asked Mimsy. Would the wards pick up the opening of a portal in a noble wizard's home? Apparently, they would. The Ancient One said that the wards will 100% pick up on a portal that's opened on the property. Especially in the home of a noble family as they should have better wards than others. Tom then asked if there is a way to get past the wards without being noticed. The Ancient One then snapped her fingers and a book appears in Tom's lap. That is a book on subverting and bypassing wards. Read it and you should be fine. The Ancient One says as she picks up her mystery novel. That is the full payment for the secret you told me. If you need anything else, feel free to come at any time. I would love to learn more about my students' secrets. She says as she shoes Tom away and opens her book to the page she left off. Tom isn't interested in revealing any more of his secrets so he leaves the room swiftly. He goes back to his room and starts speed reading the book given to him by the Ancient One. Tom stayed up the rest of the night studying the book. His perfect recall working at the max to remember every word and blemish on the pages. With the knowledge from this book, Tom seems to have everything he needs to get past the wards. It would take some time to set everything up but he has a few days. He'll need these few days to make sure that everything is perfect. If he messes up when sneaking past the wards, he may be attacked by the wards themselves. That would be worse than being caught by Lord and Lady Rosier. At least with them, Tom can try to woo them with the whole air of Slytherin thing. Now the question is how he will take care of Druella's parents. He needs to get the drop on them somehow, but before worrying about that, Tom needs to start working on getting past the wards. Then he can send an elf in to scout the area. Chapter 48. Rosier Manor. After spending the whole night studying the book that his teacher gave him, Tom didn't get any sleep nor would he sleep at all the next day. He had too much to prepare and get ready for his encounter at Rosier Manor. In order to stay up and alert, Tom would drink some pepper-up potions. He's up to a good enough standard in potions where he could make them on his own now so he always has a store of some just for emergencies along with other helpful potions. When morning came, Tom started working on the easiest way to subvert the wards. This way will only work if he has a person on the inside helping him out. There were many other possible avenues to pass the wards, but they would take more time to prepare. Tom has Briar to work on the inside, so thankfully he could take the easier way in. Tom could probably trade a secret to the Ancient One and she would help, but he would rather save those instances for emergencies. He makes a mental note to practice everything in the book though. The ability to bypass wards unnoticed will definitely come in handy down the line. With renewed vigor thanks to the pepper-up potion, Tom spent the entire day drawing runes, arrays, and other symbols. He needs to prepare some things to send to Briar before anything can happen. He would send it to Druella but Tom doesn't know if her parents are reading her mail. The fact that her brother could send a letter tells him that they shouldn't be going through Briar's mail. Hopefully, that assumption is correct. Briar's owl is still relaxing in Tom's room as well. The journey was long and the bird needed a break. Tom has decided to send everything with the owl as to not cause suspicion with a delivery from his owl. 
he sends mail to Druella fairly frequently so her parents most likely know Tom's owl by now. By the end of the day, Tom was exhausted but he finished a nice package for Briar. At this time, Briar's owl was fully rested and fed. Tom opened a portal in the sky above London and ushered the owl through. At first, the thing was freaked out and didn't want to go anywhere near the portal, but Tom was far too tired to deal with this, so he cast the imperious curse on it and sent it on its way. After sending out the owl, Tom went straight to bed. The few pepper-up potions that he took throughout the day took a toll on his young body. Before bed, Tom told Mimsy to wake him up bright and early. He can't risk oversleeping due to exhaustion. Collapsing on his bed, Tom fell asleep the second his head touched the pillow. In a beautiful room built for a high-standing noblewoman, Druella Rosier lay in her bed plotting against her annoying parents. When she returned to her home after her third year of Hogwarts, she has been constantly pestered by her parents. They kept asking questions about school and why things started changing so quickly. As the summer went on, Druella started missing the days when her parents would just ignore her existence. Although, that isn't how her parents always treated her. Treatment like that only began when she entered Hogwarts and befriended Tom. They used to treat her like their greatest treasure and pamper her to no end. Though she would never change her decision in backing Tom. She's said it before and she'll say it again. Befriending Tom was the smartest and luckiest moment of her entire life. A few days ago, Druella's parents couldn't take it anymore and decided to use legitimacy on their daughter. The second they tried, they received a backlash that gave them a slight migraine. She's been training her acclimacy under Tom for three years now, so that was the outcome she knew would happen. After receiving such a backlash, her parents became even more suspicious and prohibited her from leaving the house. They then swiftly ordered a vial of Veritaserum to use on her. They knew the risks of using such a potent potion on a witch that isn't fully developed, yet they still chose to use it on their own daughter. Druella has tried leaving the house many times. Through the windows, out the back door, and she even thought about trying apparition. Though she gave up on the last idea as she could splint herself into many gruesome pieces without practice. Every time she would put a single part of her body outside the house, Druella would be teleported back into the living room. The worst part about it was that her parents would be notified every single time. This made their suspicions grow with every escape attempt. Something was going on at that school and their daughter knew enough to try and escape before taking a truth potion. While Druella was plotting against her parents, her brother Briar was sitting in his room waiting for the return of his owl. He sent an owl to his lord days ago and has been nervously waiting ever since. Suddenly, his owl flew through his open window and drops a sealed package onto the bed. Briar wastes no time opening the package as he knows it has to be from his lord. Inside the package is a letter with instructions and countless papers with tons of symbols and arrays. Some of the symbols Briar could understand but the majority looked like gibberish to him. The instructions he was given explained that he needed to find a secluded area in his house, and place the papers together like a puzzle along with a few other steps. Everything was explained in the simplest format so there wouldn't be any screw-ups. Knowing that his lord has a plan, Briar gets to work immediately. He goes to his closet and starts setting everything up. It should be spacious enough for everything. Following the directions to the letter, Briar sets everything up as his lord wrote in the letter. This took him the whole day as he wanted to make sure everything was perfect. His master warned about any possible mistakes. When he was finished and a hundred percent sure that everything was perfect, Briar went over to the package and picked up a piece of paper that said tear this once everything is set up. After tearing it into pieces, Briar burned all of the evidence and went straight to sleep. He worked all night and would need his strength for when his lord arrived. If he were to arrive while he's still asleep, Tom would just wake him up. As Tom sleeps comfortably in his bed, a piece of paper on his nightstand tears into pieces. When he's woken up by Mimsy early in the morning, the first thing he does is turn to see the paper. 
A smile forms on his face when he sees that it's torn apart. Good, he completed the preparations quicker than expected. Tom says as the image up Briar Rosier raises a few notches in his mind. Mimsy, I have a job for one of the elves. Whichever is the stealthiest of the bunch should work nicely. Hmm, Mimsy can do it herself then. Mimsy says as she sticks her chest out in pride. Chapter 49 Mimsy Recon Mission Seeing as Mimsy was so confident in her stealth abilities, Tom would send her to scout Rosier Manor. He brought her to the corner of his room that was painted with symbols. It looked like Tom was going to perform a ritual in the corner of his bedroom. Mimsy, show me your chest for a moment. Tom says as he pulls out a piece of paper with red symbols on it. M. Master. I don't know if we should do this. Mimsy says as a blush forms on her gray-skinned face. Hmm, what are you talking about? Just show me your chest. He replies, not understanding what his head elf is thinking. B but, I'm just a servant. Mimsy isn't worthy of master's love. Mimsy says dramatically as she covers her chest. That's not what I meant. Tom exclaims as he realizes what Mimsy is talking about. I just need to stick this paper on your chest. It will hide you from being noticed by the wards while exploring the house. Once Mimsy realized that her master wasn't asking for her purity, she pulled down her clothes and allowed Tom to place the paper on her chest. Speaking of her clothes, Tom has made it a rule that all of his elves must dress nicely. They represent him so they should dress the part. At first, they thought he was going to give them clothes and freaked out. Seeing as the mere thought of receiving clothes scares the daylights out of his servants, Tom ordered them to make their own clothes in the style of butlers and maids. It took a bit of practice, but with the help of magic, they were able to start dressing nicely. Good, take this. He hands her two pieces of paper. The red one is for emergencies. Rip it and I'll know that something bad has happened. The white one is to tell me that you've finished the job. Now, do you see that circle over there? Tom says as he points to an open area in the mess of symbols. She nods her head as she sees what Tom is pointing at. I need you to stand there but don't smudge any of the symbols please. Mimsy nods her head and pops straight into the circle so she doesn't ruin her master's work. I'm going to send you to Rosier Manor. The lord and lady of the house are blood purists and most likely bad masters to their elves so be careful, okay? Mimsy nods her head from her place in the circle. Good, I need you to scout the place out for me. Who's in the house? What's in the house? Is anyone supposed to be arriving? Where are their wands? Do they have any backup wands? Get me as much information as you can because it could very well save my life. Also, if you have the chance, steal the wands of every person in the house. Except for the two children Briar and Druella. They serve me as you do, so they can keep their wands. Don't take any wands if the opportunity isn't there. I don't need my head elf getting killed, after all. Do you understand? Tom asked. Yes, master. Mimsy will take care of everything, she says with determination. A wizard without a wand is just a normal human, and will make my job a lot easier. Tom thought as taking down grown wizards would be challenging for him, but without a wand, he could easily handle them. I'm glad to see you motivated, but be on alert. I don't want to lose my favorite elf. Tom says as Mimsy breaks out into tears. I'll be vigilant, master. Nothing will take Mimsy from her kind-hearted master. She says with a blinding smile and a face full of tears. As long as you're careful, I have nothing to worry about. Tom says and waits a minute for Mimsy to calm down a bit. Are you ready? Then I'll see you on the other side. When you finish all of your work, I'll be coming in the same way as you, so be sure to meet me there. Remember to use the white and red papers. Also, don't ruin the papers when you arrive. You'll know what I mean when you see it. Tom reminds her as he places his hand on a certain set of symbols. Good luck, Mimsy. 
As Tom says this, he calls upon the eldritch energy and pushes it through his hand and into the symbols. Everything lights up and a blinding light envelopes Mimsy. When the light dies down, everything is as it was except for Mimsy. She's no longer in the room and had hopefully been sent to the Rosier Manor. Tom then starts preparing for when Mimsy will alert him to her situation. He has his own set of papers linked to hers, and they're in his peripheral vision at all time. In the very early morning of the 28th of July, a bright light shines through the cracks of Briar Rosier's closet. Briar himself is still fast asleep on his bed and won't wake for a few hours. As the light dies down in the closet, Mimsy the house elf could be seen standing in the middle of a bunch of papers with symbols on them. The second she arrived, Mimsy disappears and stealthily exits the closet. On her way out, she makes sure not to mess up any of the papers as her master ordered. Mimsy then goes room to room searching the entire manor. Throughout her search, she makes sure not to run into anyone, especially the house elves. After scouting the home from top to bottom, Mimsy found that the house doesn't have that many residents. Only Lord and Lady Rosier and their two children live in the manor. Other than them, the house is maintained by five house elves. Once Mimsy finished scouting the home, she started snooping on the Lord and Lady. They've been up and awake since before her arrival. The children already served her master, so she had no reason to spy on them. Mimsy didn't learn much, but they didn't seem to be preparing for anyone's arrival so that was good. Her next goal was to find the Lord and Lady's wands. She found out that both of them have their wands in a wand holster on their person at all times. Each holster is enchanted to block others from summoning the wands. This will stop her from stealing the wands, but she also found some spare wands hidden around the house. She stole every spare wand she could find, broke them, and put them in the closet she arrived in away from the papers on the floor. Seeing as she couldn't find out any more information, Mimsy ripped the white paper and waited in the closet. Briar is still soundly asleep on his bed outside the closet. A half an hour after the white paper was torn apart, the closet lit up and Tom appeared surrounded by the papers on the floor. He looked over to Mimsy with a pleased expression on his face. Everything seemed to be going well. What have you found out so far? Tom asks and Mimsy tells him everything. Hmm, good job. Before Tom could continue speaking, the closet opens to reveal a groggy-looking briar rosier. He must have woken up and seen the light from Tom's arrival. My lord. He says with a happy smile. It's good you're here. Yeah, I just arrived. Tom says as he peeks out of the closet to make sure the door to Briar's room is closed. What are we going to do about my parents? We can't let them use that potion on Druella. Who knows how it will affect her? Briar exclaims with a worried expression. Before we get into this, go get Druella and bring her here, Mimsy. Be sure to tell her that you're my head elf. Make sure to avoid the parents on the way there and back. Tom says and Mimsy goes invisible again and makes her way to Druella's room. While we're waiting for the girls to arrive, do you have any pertinent information for me? Chapter 50, Druella's Plan On the morning Tom arrived at Rosier Manor, Druella woke up with a plan. At first, she wanted to find the manor's ward stone and mess with it so she could leave. That plan was immediately thrown away as she had no idea how wards are made and how to change them. The plan for the day is to somehow get her parents' wands and make them let her go. She can't risk spilling any of Tom's secrets. Not when she just started gaining more of his trust. If she were to spill her friend's secrets, Tom would never trust her again. Of course, he wouldn't blame her as she had no control over it but he wouldn't tell her any more secrets that's for sure. As she woke up bright and early, she hoped that her parents were still asleep. Druella grabbed her wand and made her way to the door, but before she could leave, a house elf appeared in front of her. Out of sheer reaction, she pointed her wand at the elf and fired a spell. Stupefy. Druella calls as she tries to create some distance between her and the elf. Poor Mimsy 
who was just coming to get her master's friend, was hit by the stunner and fell over frozen in place on the floor. Before she was hit, Mimsy tried to reach for the red paper given to her for emergencies, but she wasn't fast enough and succumbed to the spell. Druella left the elf in the room and swiftly started searching for her parents. She didn't notice that Mimsy wasn't one of the elves that normally works in the manor. Nor did she notice that Mimsy was dressed in finer clothing than those elves as well. Her mind was pointed in one direction, and that was getting out of this house before the next day arrives. While Druella was on the warpath, Tom was being briefed on everything Briar knows about this situation. Apparently, the other Slytherin parents are suspicious as well, so they all had a sort of meeting and agreed to wait for the information from the Rosiers. They would never subject one of their children to Veritasarum, so they let the Rosiers use it on their wayward daughter. Some of the more ruthless parents tried to use legitimacy on their children as the Rosiers did to Druella, but were blocked all the same. The princes, who are known to produce good potion masters, volunteered to make the truth serum themselves. Of course, a potion of that caliber would take time, and they didn't have any stored away at the moment. I guess Snape had potion making in his blood. If only he had teaching somewhere in there as well. Tom thought when he heard this. Lord Prince is supposed to be delivering the potion tomorrow, and will be sitting in on Druella's questioning. Lords Rosier and Prince will then attend a meeting with some Slytherin alumni and tell them what they heard. The large majority of these Slytherin alumni are the parents of the current Slytherin children. I can work with this. Tom thought as Briar finished explaining. Good work, Briar. Leaving you as head of the council wasn't a bad idea. It's too bad that you've already graduated. Thank you, my lord. Briar says with a happy smile. Briar won't be returning to Hogwarts next year as he just graduated. He won't have many chances to impress his lord, so the fact that he can be of help now is good. His standing will rise and he won't have to worry about falling behind the other Slytherins. Where the hell are Druella and Mimsy? Tom said as he started growing impatient. Maybe, Druella is with our parents and Mimsy is waiting until they separate. Briar says as he peeks over at the clock on his wall. She has only been gone for about ten minutes. That's wishful thinking, Briar. Tom says as he starts thinking. Something is wrong. Are you sure? Maybe we should wait a couple more minutes? Briar says as he starts to worry a bit as well. No, Mimsy is taking too long, which means that something unforeseen has happened. Tom says as he checks the paper linked to Mimsy's emergency paper. Nothing is wrong with it. No tears or rips and not even a crinkle. Fuck it. We're going to have to do this without them. Follow me. Tom would open a portal to the mirror dimension to survey the area but the wards would pick up on that. He could also use his astral projection, but his spiritual body wouldn't have the paper which is currently on his chest that hides him from the wards. The only thing cloaking him and Mimsy from the wards right now are those papers. Without them, they would be discovered immediately. Tom and Briar leave the room stealthily and start searching for Lord and Lady Rosier. Without Mimsy's help, Tom has no idea if he'll run into any of the Rosier elves. He does know from Mimsy earlier report that Lord and Lady Rosier were in the living room, but that information is a bit dated. While Tom and Briar were still talking in her brother's room, Druella has found her parents eating breakfast in the dining room. She saunters in and takes her place at the table without gracing her birth givers with a single word. She has to wait for the best moment to strike and now wasn't it. If she were to hide and stalk them around the place, they may discover her or an elf may report what's going on. The best course of action is to act normal and wait for the moment to strike. The elves bring her breakfast and she starts eating without acknowledging her parents' existence. This seems to anger her parents as they are starting to get fed up with their daughter's attitude. Their status has taken a big drop due to her actions, yet she has the nerve to act this way. They just wished that she would renounce that mud-blood friend of hers and make everything right. But that is a very doubtful situation. Druella, would you stop acting like this already? 
just tell us what is happening at that school, and we won't have to go through with using the truth potion. We don't want to use it either, but you have to see reason before it's too late. Druella's mother, Lady Francesca Rosier says as she hopes her daughter would go back to the way she was before she met that muggle-born. Druella simply ignores her mother and continues eating her breakfast. When her daughter doesn't reply to her, she starts to frown and sighs openly. There's no point, dear. Lord Orlando Rosier says as he finishes his food. I'm afraid our daughter isn't who we once knew her to be. He says as he gets up to leave the room. This is my chance. Druella thought as her father leaves the dining room. With my father gone, I can deal with my mother first. As her father leaves the room, Druella puts her head down and pretends to be affected by his words. She turns on the waterworks and starts openly sobbing. The second her mother sees Druella like this, she is stunned for a moment, but gets up and tries to console her daughter. Lady Rosier takes her daughter into her arms and tries her best to calm her down. It's all right, sweetheart. Just tell us what's happening at school and everything will be okay. We're worried about you, you know? What if something horrible is happening there and we don't know anything about it? How are we supposed to help if we don't know what's happening? She says as she holds her sobbing daughter in her embrace. BB but. Druella stutters as she pulls away from her mother. But what, sweetie? Lady Rosier asks as she separates from her daughter. But I'm not telling you anything. Druella says as she grasps her mother's wand in her left hand. What? Lady Rosier exclaims as Druella draws her wand and aims it at her. Stupefy. Druella calls out and her mother drops to the ground like a sack of bricks. What are you doing? Lord Rosier shouts as he entered the dining hall to grab his smoking pipe that he left behind. This marks the end of part 6 of the story I'm Voldemort. Thank you for listening. Please like the video and hit the subscribe button to listen more. Hit the bell icon to get notified of all the new content uploaded to the channel ASAP.